MikeFarrellRivals.com here with Mario Cristobal, who has been putting together an amazing recruiting class. And we got to start this first. I am a geek, a helmet geek. I love <laughs> Oregon helmets. So there's, I put this one on and I pretend I'm Marcus Mariota. I put this one on and I pretend I'm Justin Herbert. And then when I put this one on, I feel like, like Eric Blunt, like real tough, you know? These are the coolest things on earth. How much does this stuff play into recruiting, do you think? I, you know, I think it's it's just a bonus. You know, I think that uh, we've made a very strong transition to finding guys that love to play the game, that want to be physical and then want to do things, you know, at a certain level um, in terms of hard work and dedication. So, but but all the fact that not only is it really nice gear, it's from a performance standpoint, just the best that you can find, you know, in, in NFL or in college football. So um, the helmets themselves are just kind of the tip of the iceberg. There's so much that comes with Nike and being uh, the Nike school. What if Oregon, with all the advantages that it has, you know, your amazing facilities, all the gear, all the financial support you get, what if you were in the Southeast? Would you win 10 national championships in a row? <laughs> Hey, I'm just focused on making sure that where we are and situated where we are, that we can get on track and, and that be the goal every single year, you know. Uh, it's been a rough week. You had, uh, obviously, another game to prepare for. You got a signing class to put together. I'm sure uh, there's other stuff going on that I won't even mention. But let's talk about your recruiting class and, and how weird is it to have a signing day while you're prepping for a game? Well, you know, this happened to us, um, when was it? At the end of 17, my first year here, when when Coach Taggart had uh, left Florida State and I was, you know, named the coach. And we had an early bowl game with an early signing date, the first of its kind. That was chaotic because you had to practice till 6. You had to hop on a jet at 7. You tried to do home visits till 1 in the morning and try to get back in time for practice the next morning. It, uh, that was truly the, bit, the most challenging time I've ever faced as a coach. Um, now, since most of the class was already just completely committed, in fact, they did an unbelievable job recruiting each other. You know, we felt that overall it, uh, it went about as smooth as you can have a, a signing day go. So, but we know we have been preparing. This is the third opponent we prepare for in the last five days because yeah. of all the changes that went on. So, um, but you know what? It's, it's that kind of a year. You adapt in your role and you make no excuses. You just keep, 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 keep working. You know, Dante Thornton committed back in October. And you've added one guy since, which you can't talk about because his letter's not in yet. But that makes for a pretty smooth day, I would imagine. Obviously, there were a couple guys that you would have liked to be involved with still. And there's a few out there that you're still involved with. But this class is ranked third. Oh, wait, fourth. Sorry. Fourth. We got to get back up to third. I know. I just <laughs> look, I'm like, this. Wait, wait. you know, Georgia passed you, I'm sure. Hold on. We got time. They did. Yeah, they got 20 commitments. You got 21 average star 3.86 for Oregon's never been done before at at your university. Recruiting has never been to this level. Uh, and and it, what do you attribute it to? I mean, you have sort of a Southeast Conference, South Florida mentality in recruiting. Um, is, is it your your energy, your staff? I mean, how aggressive are you guys? I me, mean, it's the people, it's the staff, it's the place, it's our players. I'm always going to say that your players are your best ambassadors, they're your best recruiters because, you know, your your prospects want to talk to them and find out, well, how, how are things really done there? You know, talk to me about your day, talk to me about your season, your off season, your winter conditioning program, all that stuff, and and talk to me if the people are real. And I think when, when real meets real, I mean, that just exponentially grows in a strong manner. And that's what's been going on here. Plus, the investment in the student athlete here continues to grow. It's the best in the entire country. I mean, what the way that we care for our players in terms of uh, academic and academic support and nutrition and medical uh, advances and training, strength and conditioning. It's just, um, you know, our gear, of course, with our with being the Nike school, it's just incredible. And it doesn't stop. It only it's, it gets hungrier. It becomes more intense. So we uh, we feel like this is just getting started. And, you know, a, a school that is in the Pacific Northwest, which doesn't have a home state that's just 
you know, loaded with talent is supposed to suffer during a pandemic. Um, you're one of your advantages of getting kids on campus and selling Oregon. So how have you done it with COVID? You know, I think um, we're coming off a, a really good year, coming off the Rose Bowl win, um, coming off, you know, the, the Pac-12 uh, win as well. And there was a lot of momentum. And, you know, what kind of hurt us is the fact that we were going to have a spring game that was going to be just the largest audience we've ever had. We had numerous of our top prospects scheduled to come on in. And when that hit, we were we were thinking, wow, this is for the first time, we're not going to be able to get guys on campus. This, this could affect us negatively if we let it. So we took the approach that if they can't come to us, we're going to come to them. And we spent an, uh, an enormous amount of time just bringing ourselves and our place and our people into the living rooms through Zoom and FaceTimes and everything else. And uh, we were just as real as it could get. And again, the staff, uh, the credit goes to the staff, our players, our recruiting staff. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a small piece of this whole organization, you know, and certainly I'm I'm just I'm lucky. I'm, I'm fortunate. I got awesome people and we love to grind. You know, we love to grind and we know that to get to where we want to get to, we have to continue to upgrade the roster. Got two five stars in this class. Uh, I don't think that's ever been done either in Oregon history, at least since I've been doing this at Rivals. Ty Thompson, quarterback, and then you got your blindside protector of Ty Thompson and Kingsley Suamataya. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tell me a little bit about those two guys and, and how special they could be. Well, you, you couldn't draw them up any better, you know, if you wanted to. You know, at quarterback, you got a guy that he possesses all the traits you want for a championship and a leader of your organization. I mean, he's as poised and cool as it gets, but he's a fiery competitor. Unbelievable arm talent with the legs to match, a tremendous mind mindset, super high character, athletic, tough, great vision, escapability, pocket presence, high football IQ, hungry to get better. And his traits mirror, mirror that of, of Kingsley. You know, King, we've known Kingsley for a long time we saw him when he was really young and we said that guy right there has to be part of the university of oregon family he is the length the athletic ability the toughness the upbringing you know uh, what leroy and tomorrow have done an unbelievable job raising that young man as, as the thompsons did with with ty it's a uh, high level high character guys that are hungry driven focused He's athletic, he's explosive, he's tough, he plays with leverage, he's heavy-handed, he's light-footed, great balance and body control, he can anchor, he's got, he's got some unbelievable tools, and he is, he's itching to get over here. He's asking if he could come over here tomorrow and start practicing with us, but we can't do that quite yet. I wish we could. Now, I know you love to talk about the big guys. And, and, you know, everybody else loves to talk about the skill guys. So let's talk about your wide receiver class uh, and then your two tight ends. I mean, this is five guys that, that I've got here. Uh, you know, seven's going to play defensive back, I assume. Dante Thornton, Isaiah Brevard, Troy Franklin, Terrence Ferguson, and uh, Maliki Matavo, all from different areas, Maryland, Mississippi, Cal Southern California, uh, Colorado, Nevada. I mean, tell me about this receiving group because I think it's one of the best jobs in the country when it comes to getting uh, guys that can stretch the field. Yes, sir. And, and Sevens is going to play running back for us. That's oh, he is going to play running back. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, when we uh, started the, the cycle, we felt that that these five guys were like, they were must gets. They were the tops of the tops by our evaluation processes because they all possess explosiveness, length, great, great ball skills. The ability to track the ball and then do something with it after they catch it was was something that we were really needing and searching for in this class. All the guys there, they're hard workers. They've got the right mentality, the right DNA. They're great fits in our culture. And that's the part that we, to us, that's always going to be one of the biggest keys, guys that really fit in this culture. Um, they're, they're fun to be around. They got great energy. Um, I mean, name them. I mean, when they're, they're ringing up your phone way before, the Seminole one time, you know, trying to mess with you saying, hey, coach, if I can get in my NLI before everybody else, can I choose my number first? I mean, all that kind of stuff yeah. was going on this morning. It was awesome. But between Malik and Terrence, I just, man, those two guys, how could you draw them up any better with that length, that size, that power? You've seen them what they do in those seven-on-seven -seven tournaments this year because they couldn't play much ball. Terrence got to play some ball. 
and you see you see what they do. I mean, these guys are are an, uh, an absolute personnel mismatch nightmare for folks. Um, and then they're complimented by these wide receivers. I I just don't think we could have done better. I thought these guys, all of them, were the best in the country. Yeah, and I know how high you are on, I mean, the combination of size and speed that you've got at wide receiver, and they're all like 6'3 and over, so uh, that's that's a big deal. But defensive backs, you're losing a few good guys, obviously, that opted out, and you had to replenish there. Um, really good class on the defensive back side of things. So in practice, it's going to get pretty pretty physical because you got Bassa, you got David and, and Davies, uh, and then and Barkins, I, I I don't know, you know, where he's going to. We got him as an athlete, but probably a defensive back for you as well, right? Yes, sir. Both Barkins and Davies are for us. They're corners, um, and we thought these were guys that were just ultra talented, skilled, uh, explosive guys. They have good length. Um, they play in really competitive leagues. They have just unbelievable cover skills, and we need some guys. You know, we got hit twofold this year. We had a huge senior class leave, but then we had our seniors come back for our season as well as two, you know, what everyone seems to think. And we believe two first round juniors. And then when our season got canceled, you know, the opt outs wiped that out, too. We essentially lost two classes of great players in one swoop. So there's no chance to replace that until now, until this time. And, and that's what we've been doing. But between those guys at Corn Jalen is just awesome human being, awesome competitor. Barkins, Barkins is running, he's cranking out four fours, low four fours consistently as a six footer with some unbelievable talent. And both Damon and um, and um, Jeffrey Bassa are, these are not only physical guys, you know, that, that slam the box in there and run the alley. These are guys that could play man coverage as well. These are both long, athletic, explosive guys, uh, phenomenal families. Um, they just, they're all about the hard work. They're super talented. They're guys that can come in and play right away. So we feel very fortunate to have these guys with us. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell me how bad we've missed on Jabril McNeil and what position he's going to play. Yeah, you guys missed bad. Yeah, no he's doubt. a three no star, doubt. a low three, but you you know, you have at it. Go ahead. No, no, you know, and you know what? It's uh, I think um, that's that's the best part about this, being able to talk and and being able to share. Uh, opinions on on stuff like this Jabril is a long explosive notice how in every single position whether it be a lineman a receiver even a quarterback they have to have explosive traits they got to be able to change the game you know I got to be able to put the film on, on my at my house and my nine-year-old's got to be able to say oh papa that that guy's good you know <laughs> that guy really jumps out so that's kind of the barometer that we use to, to go on prospects at least to start of it but here's the thing with, with Jabril Jabril is uh Football family, awesome, high character, very just purpose-driven family. And his length, he's got a lot of versatility. You see him play inside and outside. We like him as an edge guy uh, because he has natural pass rush ability. This guy can go speed of power, speed rush, can put a foot in the ground, spin out of it, get to the quarterback. Um, he's already weighing – I mean, he's, he's at about 6'4". He's weighing in the 230s on his way to more than that. This is – we think this is another NFL guy that uh, we were lucky enough to, to link up with and get to know the family. And, yeah, we we feel we got ourselves a, a great one in Jabril McNeil. Yeah, and, and we, you know, from an evaluation point, got sent, stuck like a lot of people do because there was no season in certain states. So it's like, what can we do if we evaluate someone early? And, and so it's been a, it's been a, an interesting year, I'm sure, from your point of view and evaluation, our point of view and evaluation. And that one you can remind me on how wrong I am in a few years when he's in the NFL. Um, I think it's a great, a great opportunity for the entire country to take a snapshot in three years from now yeah. and in a pandemic year with no live evals, who truly did the best job with their eyes, yeah. you know, because you had to go off a of film for the most part. You know, and part of me prefers that because sometimes you over-evaluate, you know, how you've seen so many kids so many times, like Minka Fitzpatrick is an example of that where I saw him 85 times. And I started picking at things that really weren't there. And you, you know, Minka, obviously, you, you were at Alabama at the time. So I'm like, ah, he's a safety. I don't think he can play corner. And now he's a superstar, first rounder, does everything. And I'm like, that was a case of overvaluation. So 
this will be interesting. I like seeing them in person, but film evaluation is still where it's at. So it's going to be an interesting year. Um, I'm going to blame the pandemic if I get somebody wrong. <laughs> and I'm going, to, I'm going to brag about my amazing evaluation skills if I get somebody right. All right, you before you go, I, I'm going to let you choose. Silver, yellow, green. Which one do you want me to put on? Got to go with silver. See if it fits first. <laughs> I love helmets, man. I am such a loser. But this right here is a recruiting video for you if you want to use it for Oregon football. Um, uh, I'm going to snap a picture of it right now. There we oh, go. Wait, hold on. You got it. All right. That'll, there you go. This is a top class next year for sure. Look at that, right? I still got four years left. Yep. yep. There we go. All right. All right. If yeah, you, yeah. Well, we, we, we'll, 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 we'll assess it after one year. We'll see where it's at. I'm a little, I'm kind of a doughy linebacker with no speed, but instincts like crazy. You wouldn't believe We got it. tremendous opportunities on the scout team for you. You're good to go. <laughs> I'll end up getting killed. All right, man. I really appreciate your time, especially during this week. I mean, you got a, you got a conference championship to play for. So giving me 10 minutes and watching me put on stupid helmets, I appreciate it as always. Great class, number four. Let's get it back up to three, though. You're slacking. Let's do that. We got a little time. Uh, yeah, trust me. February. We'll be right back in. Back to three, at least maybe two, one, right? I appreciate you, and I appreciate all the hard work you do. Thank you for having me Thanks. on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.